Hello, dear friends. Thomas Manton the fourth here. In a beautiful place, you see I'm in front of a merry-go-round. And it was just spinning, it stopped. I don't know if it'll spin again right now, but you see the uh, backdrop there. And I heard the, I heard the Lord speak to me. I was, I was getting my uh, Christmas kind of coffee here. Look at this, look at this cup, isn't that beautiful? Christmas coffee. Mm. Christmassy kind of stuff going on. And the Lord spoke to me when I was watching the merry-go-round. And, and he said, uh, a lot of my people are like that, going around in circles. And a lot of things going on in the nation because things are going around in circles. A lot of things going on like that, people going around in circles because they don't want to change and step into new things. I want to tell you something. If you want something huge, big in your life, it's going to cost you. You're going to, you're going to, God's going to take you beyond your comfort zone. He's going to take you beyond your uh, uh, level of normal living and routine. Because the routine you've had got you where you are now. But if you want something greater, you're going to have to rise up and do something different, yeah? And one of that is like, get involved with powerful people. And they don't always chase you. You gotta go find them. You, if you wanna be with greatness, you're gonna have to seek it out. You're gonna have to go where it is. You're gonna have to invest the time. You're gonna have to move in that direction. And you're going to have to also, another thing is you, you want to sow seed. You want to make sure you're a tither. First of all, 10% of all your proceeds. Make sure it comes out. You put it in a separate account. Uh, account for it however you want. But make sure it goes into the anointing. The storehouse is not always the church. People can make it like it's the church, but really... Uh, it's a little bit heavy, what I'm going to say, but it's, it's biblical. Like in the book of Numbers, I can't remember the chapter right now. One of my dear evangelist friends, who's a very famous man, I was just with him uh, up until yesterday. And uh, my schedule was too tight. I didn't have extra time to have, have with him, but I'll have to schedule that. See, that's another thing. I have to, I have to schedule time to meet with him as we're both so busy, crisscrossing, traveling all over the world. He, he was telling me that in the scripture... Uh, the tithe was for the priests, for the priesthood. Hey, everybody coming on. Hi, Jane. Bless you. <laughs> I've been so busy. Woo, I've been uh, thousands of miles. Hello, uh, Pastor Spies. God bless you, my friend. Marion from New York, Anthony from New York, but now you're in Florida. I want to wave back at all of you. Yvonne, hello. Caroline, hello. Marianne. Township. Where are you from? Write me a note. Tell me where you're from. Rosemary from West Africa. I think you are. South, south. Somewhere over there. Namib Namib is it Namibia or somewhere like that. Okay, so. Uh, the Lord spoke to me also. He said, he said, pray over everybody that types a note to you. Or sows a seed or connects by appearing in person. There's a blessing I'm going to release the Lord said upon them for doing that. So you go ahead and do that. Don't be quiet, just don't be on the broadcast, but interact tangibly. All right? So the third thing you want to do is you want to be a giver. God may ch challenge you to sow. I, I know he may, may, he will, if you're in the right environment. To sow on higher levels, and you just have to make a decision. You say, I don't know how convenient this is, but what I have is not enough to meet all my needs. So there has to be uh, seeds that I have to sow. When something's not big enough to meet your need, it can be seed. It should be seed. Just sow and let God grow it. You think like, well, I have so many thousands of this, and then you take 1,000 out, take 2,000 out, take something out. Uh, and, and do it. And a great man of God who's very famous around the world, I was just with him, we prayed together. 
he prayed, he prayed, we prayed together and he grabbed my hands and he prophesied. He said, he said, yeah, it's spinning. There it is. There goes the merry-go-round. Woo! -hoo. The Lord, uh, so don't be one going around in circles. That's the word here. Don't be a person going around in circles like on the merry-go-round. Move linear. Move forward. And don't look back. Isn't it terrible when you have to go back? I was traveling and I was, I was running late for a flight and it looked like I was going to miss the flight. But then the Lord did something amazing. The flight was delayed 35 minutes. So I was able to dash and the airport was an hour and 10 minutes away. My God, and that was like it for the day from the little airport. If I, if I had to, if I wasn't going to be able to make it somehow, I'd have to backtrack and go back. So you don't want to spin around and you don't want to go in reverse. You don't want to go in reverse. You want to always be moving forward. So God will challenge you to sow. Let me tell you, when you believe that the seed will produce, because it will, according to the scripture, it's clear as, it's clear as day, it's clear as the sun comes out every day, as sure as there's nightfall every day, as sure as there's uh, summer and winter and every, every year, as Genesis 8.22 says, seed time and harvest time will continue. All right, so when you sow, you're going to reap. And Jesus spoke about 30-fold, 30 times, not 30% of the 100 that you gave. 30 times what you gave. 60 times what you gave. 100 times what you gave. Imagine that, even a 1,000 times what you gave. According to Isaiah 60.22, says a little one will become like a 1,000 and a small one like a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. I've been teaching on this. Its time means God was already ready, but you weren't ready. See, we blame things on God's timing, yeah? We say, well, it must, must not have been God's will, must not have been in his timing. But he was ready from 2,000 years ago when Jesus said, it is finished, I've given all now to you. It was already done. So, we... <laughs> We need, to, we need to get out of the spirit of stupid. I call SOS. That's SOS written above a lot of people. The spirit of stupid. You're not stupid because God didn't make any junk. But you become stupid by foolish people, devils bothering you, wrong environments, and ignorance, lack of learnedness, and lack of knowledge, and lack of revelation, and lack of information, and lack of impartation. Inspiration will get you excited. Information will get you knowing something, but impartation will make you dangerous. Let us say that again. Inspiration will get you, you know, lit up and moving, going, wanting to go. Information will help you understand something or know something, but impartation from the Holy Ghost and His anointing will make you dangerous, will get you lit up and moving. And I, I, heard, I heard this statement, like, you can have whatever you want. You know, I've, you know, I've preached and prophesied on that in, in previous broadcasts, but you can have whatever you want. It's, it's really up to you. It's not up to God. This is the thing we don't understand. God has already set his mind to bless us. Hello, dear pastor spies, lady spies. Hello. Your husband's on here, too. I'm coming again to South Africa. Coming. I feel it in my spirit. Uh, I'm a little busy now, but let's see. We're gonna make. We're gonna carve out some time. Probably sure in the in the new year somewhere. Uh, Johannesburg and Cape Town, two two places that I uh, being invited to already. But we need to we need to do more things when I come. We need to do many things. I'm gonna be. I want to be with you guys. I want to be with some. I want to really, really hit it and blow the trumpet and release the fire of heaven prophetically in South Africa because. Ah, dangerous time there, crazy time there, crazy time in America. Another thing, and, and, amen, thank you, dear. I'm coming. The, we'll arrange, we'll arrange things. Now, this spinning around going on, a lot of people are on that. And you need to get off that Ferris wheel, the one that goes like this, you know, you go up and around. That's pretty scary. If it gets stuck, you'll be up there. That's happened on the London Eye in London, that big one, and it's happened in Orlando on the, the big one at uh, International Drive in Orlando, Florida by the Disney World Resorts there. There's a very big uh, Ferris wheel, you know, that's the one that goes like this, and people have gotten stuck up there. That's really bad. 
Now, if you want to just go on the London Eye to go slow up and you can see the city and come off in like in less than an hour, that'd be okay. That's not a total waste of time because you're getting inspired by seeing something. But don't, don't stay spinning and don't be like the one behind me that goes around and around like this, around and around and around and around and you're not getting anywhere. You gotta stop that and move forward. All right, so you wanna be in a great environment with great people. You wanna make sure you're a tither. You wanna be a financial covenant. You wanna make sure you're giving. God will challenge you to give, he will. Now, I was saying that this man of God, great man of God, very famous, I'm not gonna be dropping names here. I'm not, I'm not much of a name dropper. Uh, my anointing and who I am speaks for itself all over the planet Earth and I'm well known. I'm renowned around the world for the, for the grace of God and the anointing and power of God, the giftedness of God that's on us and the gifts that we have prophetically and to teach and to preach and to raise people and cause breakthroughs in societies and nations, you know, you know me. So if I'm with famous people, I don't have to always drop names, but I can and I might just tell who I had lived dinner with or who I was with or grace to be with. You see me speaking on great platforms and very famous, very, very influential uh, generals in the kingdom. So it's awesome. But another one I was just with, uh, met him some many years ago briefly. And that was that. And he was a speaker, a main speaker in this conference also. And the Lord said through him to me, when he grabbed my hand, he said, God is going to loose big, big gifts to you, big treasures to you. He said, God's been speaking to people, but they're scared about the amount. They, they don't know what to do. And the Lord spoke to me. And you've heard me say this before. He was confirming. He didn't know. He, that's a confirmation because you've heard me say it before. The Lord told me, and I, I only say what I only say what God says. If I tell you, I'm going to tell you something because God said it, and then I'm I, I'm all out, pull out all the stops, and let it rip, let it fly. So the Lord said that He's talking to people. There are people that are able to give l large things like land, property, buildings, yes, vehicles, uh, uh, nice ones too. Yeah and uh, uh, proceeds from business deals, very, very uh, large, you know, things. And he says, son, I'm talking to people and they're gonna come. And he said, some have been afraid or they've just not quite known, but the day is going to come when that the light is going to switch on in you and you're gonna say, I have to find the profit and I have to sow that now. I have to tithe that now. I have to make sure I get it into his hands now. There are huge things going on. I can't tell all the details on the air, and I may not even say it to a lot of people, but there are some huge things going on right now. Huge. I mean, with capital in caps, you know? Drum roll. Psh, large. Large and in charge. Huge things. You ever see how people say like, like when they're saying that, like these new kind of generation people? They say no, they say no, uh, no. <laughs> like I'm talking about Noah. Let me say huge. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'm going to hear about it. I'm going to get pleasantly surprised. Divine surprise. Suddenly is coming. Because God wants to bless people. He wants to bless them with more. When you get a piece of action or something, you have something and God tells you to sow it. It's because he has a harvest on his mind to give you something much bigger. And that's what's going on in the spirit realm for kingdom advancement and for your advancement. So I'm talking about the merry-go-round. We can call this the merry-go-round. Don't stay on the merry-go-round. Get into the plan of action where you're moving forward. New things are coming. New things are happening. New things are, are, are you know, being raised for you new hidden treasures. The Lord spoke to me also about Isaiah 45 verses 2 and 3 where he's has hid, he has hidden treasures laid up for us mm. and they're coming forth into our blessed hands in Jesus name. And for what? You say for what? To advance the kingdom. To do all kinds of things. To be able to build media to touch, multiply millions of people simultaneously around the world. That's what I want, that's what I want to do. And to enjoy life and to have abundances for enjoyment. Let me tell you something, let me tell you a secret. Some people think this is a secret, but it's really all through the Bible. God gave us all things freely to enjoy. It's his pleasure 
that we prosper. Psalm 35, 27. He has freely given us all things to enjoy. Ephesians 3.20 said he'll do above and beyond what we can ask or think. No, that's uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9. I had not seen... Well, I mixed them together. I, 1 Corinthians 2.9. I had not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered the heart of the group of men, the great things of God that God has prepared for those who love him. But the next verse says he reveals these things to us by the Holy Spirit. Verse 16 in 1 Corinthians 2 says we have the mind of Christ. Yeah, Ephesians 3.20 says he'll do above and beyond, right? Above and beyond. What we even ask the thought. What we even imagine is more than that. Jeremiah 29.11, God said, I know the plans I have for you. He goes to merry-go-round again. And this is the word of the Lord today. Don't be spinning around in a circle. Jeremiah 29.11, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to bless you and to prosper you. I tell you, if you're in the presence of God and in the will of God and you're doing things to solve problems for people, that's how money comes. And you cannot stay broke. You cannot stay in debt. You cannot stay in lack. If you'll do the things that will help other people get what they want, God will give you what you want. Great motivational teacher who was a Christian brother, by the way, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He said... The way you get a lot is by helping other people get what they want. If you help other people get, many people get what they want, you'll get help getting what you want. And God will even see to it. Ephesians 6, 8 proves that biblically. Same principle. Whatever thing you do for another that's good, the same God will do for you. Also, whatever you do to another bad, the same will happen to you because there are laws in this universe. And God said, I am the one that brings recompense. I am the one that's the judge. I am the one that will bring vengeance back upon the wicked. I will repay them. You don't have to do it yourself. I have a system to, to do that. The people that do bad things, don't do it. Live right. Now, I'm talking about success, and this is a success strategy here. Don't stay on the merry-go-round. You have to change things you're doing. And you have to get very aggressive about connecting with great people, you need to be connected with me. I need to be connected with you. And there's a, 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 an explosion of the fire of God that happens and a new blessing that comes that didn't happen before. You need to, uh, you, you need to make sure your, your financial covenant's intact and you need to begin to sow seed, new seed. You can sow uh, places, you know, you, if you have a church and you're a tither there, fill them with Hey, write me a hello, Philip. I don't. I see people come on and don't just jump on and jump off. Say hi, greet the prophet. Do it. I saw your picture with your wife there. Was that you? You looked happy. She looked happy. You were saying something like, "Thank God for the bliss this lady's giving me." Was that you, Philip? Write me a hello. The Lord said he's, He'll bless anyone. I believe this is out of, even out of my control, and it's not like tied to uh, me having to actually like micromanage every name and everything because we do so many broadcasts. God said whoever types a message, a greeting, a hello, something good, and also those who partner with the ministry and sow seed into this work, he said, I will bless them. Now, if you just write a note and say hi, that's, you're not going to get the same blessing as someone that's sowing seed because there are laws that uh, govern those things that you you you. you, you you sow in a measure and you reap in the measure of multiplication. One lady came up to a man of God and she gave him a $5 bill. $5, yeah? Small money. In Kenya money, that's like uh, 500 bob, 500 shillings, yeah? It's a joke. I mean, it's okay as a little seed if that's what you have. Please do sow that. You know, no seed is too small if you're doing it. God looks at the percentages of what you're giving based on what you have. If you only had 500 shillings, well, that would be a, like, remember the little woman that gave the little two coins? And Jesus said, she's thrown in more than y'all because that was all she had. And he marveled at that. And so it's not the amount, it's the percentage. Please understand that. So that could be a great seed for somebody. But here's, here's the point. The lady gave this man, I got $5. She had more than $5, you know. Also, she was $500,000 in debt. She says, I, man of God, I, you're anointed. I want you to pray that uh, God will take me out of debt, take her out of debt. 
And, and the man of God said, the answer was back to the woman, well, what, how much is your debt? She said, $500,000. And the man says he gave her back the $5. He said, dear, you sow this any way you want to as a seed. But I don't, I don't have that kind of faith to go beyond percentage numbers to say a $5 seed is going to get $500,000 of debt wiped off. Uh, the numbers don't match up, okay? And he says, I've sown, he was talking about himself, he said he's sown like massive amounts of this. You, you, and you have to do it for a while. Let me tell you something. The first day you sow, the next, by next evening, you may not see all the big harvest there. You, it's time. That's why you need to do it continuously. You need to keep sowing continuously because this is the Holy Ghost because I had something else on my mind and the Lord changed my message and just brought me right more into this. You see, this is pure prophetic teaching, pure prophetic release, my friend. This is it. This is it. In my mind, because the election's coming up in America, I wanted to talk about politics. I want to, and I'll, I'll add that in while I'm, while I'm on it. We, we need to... Uh, we need to stop going around in the same circle. We need to go in different courses, and we also need to vote for the right people. So make sure you do early voting. The election is next Tuesday, uh, the 5th, 6th of November, next Tuesday. Today is, uh, well, when is that? Today is what, Friday? Yeah, it's this coming Tuesday, like in four days from now. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah, four days from now. And you could do early voting. You go today and get it sorted out, beat all the crowds. But make sure you do it correctly. But we need to vote. For, people need to vote for the right things. And I see, and you can't leave it to chance, like a spinning wheel, like whatever's going to happen. We just praying. No, people need to get out and vote. And pastors, I'm really ashamed to hear that many. I, I feel shame on them. I mean, no, nah, I'm not ashamed because I'm doing my part. I've, I've gone all out to take persecution because of, of, of what I'm saying politically. You know, getting our feet choked down and. People like, you know what I mean? It's not easy to just come out and speak all these things. But there are some pastors that don't want to do it. They're like little babies. They're like little pink shoes wearing gir little girls instead of grown men. Lord have mercy. Shame on them. They're not going to get any big reward from God. They're not going to be great in the kingdom if they can't even stand up and raise their voice. I pray the spirit of boldness comes on you but to do what I'm talking about too, to get your life moving forward. So you need to sow continuously. People need to vote. Go vote, tell everybody to vote, and go the red way, because that's the policies that won't be advocating killing babies and all the other illicit things and, and all the other crazy things. And those people are trying to get back to Congress and the Senate, the House uh, representatives and the Senate, the House and the Senate, and if they get majority in there, they already have their plans how they're going to go after everybody, including the president. This is no joke, folks. And if this is the last minute cry here, I pray that whoever can hear this, maybe they have an influential voice to get other people at least to do it themselves. And if they're in the USA, go vote and vote the red ticket all the way down, Republican side. Because uh, that's, that's where they have the policies that we have. I don't think it's about who you think is a more charismatic person or between one and the other. Go with the policy, not with the person. God is like that. He goes with the principle, not with the person. He, and that ties right into what I was just saying. God loves people, but he loves his law. He made a system. So he can love you. He can see your need. He can hear your cry. He can see your tears and try to wipe them away of the lack that you have, of the opposition you have, and the issues you're having. But he has a law that if you don't sow, you're not going to reap. Sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. you got to sow abundantly. Make sure you're tithing first. That's first. You don't, tithe is not what you give. Tithe is what you pay. It's your kingdom dues, you know what I mean? You're paying your, your dues in the kingdom. And then after that, you're giving from the 10.1% upwards, after the 10%. But do it generously. Now, here's, here's my point, what I was saying. You got you want to do it regularly so that, because he, Hebrews, uh, no, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 says, cast your bread upon the waters a portion of seven or eight, because you don't know which one's going to prosper more, this or that. Right? You don't know which is going to prosper more, this one or that one. So, you got to take authority in charge of your life and get some 
uh, get get some uh, chutzpah, charisma about your life to begin to cause new things to go into motion. Because God does want to bless you more than your wildest dreams. He already has it ready for you. He's not waiting to be ready to bless you. He's already ready, my friend. So you have to make the choice and everything we want as far as the presence of God we want to live in the presence of God well find out how to entreat the Holy Spirit that his presence and anointing and touch stays with you how to tap the impartation by connecting with me you got to do that it's something you do to make that happen you got to do that continuously yeah and you got to cry out to God and you got to pray and you got to worship and you got to get near and you got to make the choice I'm going to live in revival I'm going to relive, live in revitalization. I'm going to live as a reformer. I'm going to live as one who's changing my own life and changing the lives of others and making the world a better place to live because I'm here. It's your choice. Please understand this in summation to a, a few of these points. God has already established his order. He has already given us the choice to be blessed and to have his power and to have his touch and to have things his way. We can have it every day, 24-7, 24 hours a day, every single day of the week, the month, and the year. And the 366th day on the fourth year, which is the leap year, which is the day, make of February 29th in the 28-day month, every four years. All right, so all, every sec, every millisecond, every nanosecond, which is a thousandth of a second, uh, every millisecond, a milli, a nano is probably a billion, maybe milli is it's a thousand, yeah, millions of thousands, or a hundred, but whatever, however the numbers work, but ticking clock, time, 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 every second, you have the ability to make a choice to get blessed. You know the thing you need to know more than anything is what to do next. You can know a lot of things, but you need to know what to do next. So I pray this is challenging you, I know it is. You need to stop going around in the merry-go-round, merry my friend. Going around in circles, you need to make, take decisive action to get your life moving forward. Find your market, pray and ask God to show you the blueprint for your life. Get, understand your gift and talent, what he's given you. Take action in it. Write down your goals and dreams because a written goal has a 90 times, 90 times chance of coming to pass than an unwritten goal. They took three, a test, they took 3% of 100 out of 100 from a university in America at Yale University or somewhere like that and they said write your goals down 3% of people did it and the 3% of the people had more wealth amongst them amongst them than all the 97% of the others combined because when you write something down it crystallizes it into a vision Habakkuk 2.2 said that write it down write the vision make it plain so that those who read it can run with it if people don't know what to run with they can't Preachers are very, very uh, uh, need, 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 needful in, of, of doing this. They need to do this. Because you, you need to write your vision that other people can see it. You need to write what your vision is, what your plan is, who you are, what your gift is. You need to show it to the world. You need to display it and blast it out there. There's a lot of preachers around, but what's your specific message? What's your specific calling? You in business, what's your specific gift to do the business? Why do you want to do it? Not just to make money. You have to love something you're doing. What is the specific thing that you could do that no one else can do it like you? You need to know what that is. You need to write it down. You need to type it out. You need to print it out in a nice brochure. You read it and get it, keep getting versed and memorized in your own head. So when someone asks you what you do, so what do you do? Bang! I have the answer, what I do. Not just tell them what job you have, but what's your real life mission? The more specific it can be, the, the quicker you'll go ahead. And the more you work with the financial laws, then God will sovereignly, supernaturally cause suddenlies to come into your life to make it happen. That you'll just begin to get blessed. Why? Because you sowed seed and you're expecting the harvest. Here's another thing. You don't need to just sow or tithe. He said it'll open up the windows of heaven, but then to do what? you got to you got to ask God for what you want. And you have to uh, uh, name your seed. Give and it shall be given unto you. Luke 6.38. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. 
running over shall men give into your bosom or women too. At the same measure that you give out, the same measure will be measured back to you again. Name and, no, he says, give and it shall be given. Name it. What is it? Well, that's the thing that you want. So when you sow, you need to expect the harvest. You need to write down what harvest you want. I do that on every seed. If I'm giving it an offering, I write on the envelope, but then I take a photo with my phone of the envelope so I can recollect back to me of notes and I'll, tie, I'll write it on the screen and make a picture document of a, of a written, handwritten note to myself. And I'll also put it in my, uh, my files, of my typed files. And I can even speak it into the dictation thing that types, you know, the text creator from speech. And I have it written and I can see it. Then here's the smart thing you need to do. You need to get it written so and out that other people can now read it because it's not just for you to have it, it's for other people to have it. And that's what's gonna cause them to get involved with your vision. If you have a church, hey, what's, who's your church going to serve? What kind of people you wanna come? Who's your target audience? If you have a, a business, Who's your market? What market? What's the market? What are you selling? What's your service? What's the service that you're providing? What's the problem that you solve for people? And how well can you do it? And how savvy can you be? And how creative can you be to actually make it available to other people, but also make it something that other people want? And when they, people want something, believe you me, they'll find you. Oh my God, around the clock, 24-7, I'm getting prayer requests. Prayer requests. Around the clock. It, it never stops. And I cried uh, talking to some of my preacher friends. I said, I need a system where I could just be able to talk to so many people at the same time. Thank God for this live broadcast. But I, I mean it in a different way where we can send people notes and scriptures and my books and all that. Hey, hello everybody that's coming on. God bless you, my friend. Love you. Brother Frank, God bless you, man. I'm praying for you. The Lord is... Uh, Isaiah 48, 17. I'm the Lord your God who teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. You need to make it a point to keep sowing that kind of seed and keep, keep it going. You know, Ecclesiastes said... You don't know, 11, 1, you don't always know which one will prosper, this or that. So he said, do seven and eight times, seven and eight things. That was the, the multiple streams of income kind of principle, and also the multiple streams of seeds that you sow it. Because one could pop up and bring you a harvest and you get blessed and you go, wow. But it didn't come from nowhere. It came from something you did before. And some people do nothing, nothing at all, nothing much, and they wonder why they're suffering and suffocating in debt, almost drowning down the drain in despair and financial pressure and problems because they have not tithed and maybe, and they have not sown seed. I know people like that. Someone could get blessed by an opportunity because the anointing opened it up for them, but they don't work with the financial system and then they go into business and they think they're doing great, then the business crashes or doesn't come through the way they thought. Now they have all this debt. I know people like this. I'm praying for people like this. Many people, specific cases, specific individuals, they got blessed by the touch of the anointing and the favor of heaven that came upon them for connecting. But then they don't sow enough. And that's the way out. That's the way out. You can't just think of how you're going to service debt and pay debt back. You got to cut. You got to get some out and sow seed at the altar and get and into the anointing and say, God Almighty, God, please, I'm sowing this with expectation that you're going to get me out of this dilemma, and I'm going to see income. Now God will give you ideas. He'll give you strategies. He'll give you the what to do, the how to do, the where to do, and with who. All of that will come supernaturally when you open up the windows of heaven by tithing and sowing. Uh, Malachi 3, 8 to 12 says, people have robbed God and a curse came upon them because of that. And he said, uh, but I'll open the windows of heaven. He said, but it, it tithes and offerings, not just, that's just not the tithe scripture. It's also talking about offerings also. 
So I, I'm, I'm seeing this in my own life and I'm sharing, I'm sharing what success I'm having with you. And you gotta, you gotta step out. Stop going in the, I gotta go. Stop going in the merry-go-round of life, around in a circle. But get out, work these laws, the things I've talked about. Now right there's a little mini book of what I just shared today. In fact, I need to, I can make this a little mini book, like a, one of those small book you can put in your pocket, very thin, read through it, the principles typed out nicely, bang, let's make it a book. Stop living on the merry-go-round. Woo hoo hoo, there's a title. And then the principles of the one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven that I've said on what to do and how to do it. And the ingredients in this message will take your life to a different place. I prophesy and declare you're not going to be broke because you're going to work. I believe in faith. In Jesus' name, you're going to, you're going to take this word serious. You're going to take this word to heart. You're going to take this impartation. You're going to be touched by the grace of heaven that's coming through, through this voice. And, and you're going to begin to actually do some of these things and the Lord will respond with corresponding blessing because he has the laws and he has the principles set in place for you to be blessed. And it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And he takes pleasure in the prosperity of those that serve him. So do all you can. Get into the flow. Get into the anointing. Stay under the anointing. Keep breaking it loose. Don't have a dead day. Don't have a down day. Don't allow it. Fight back. You feel some, something trying to take you out of the spirit, out of the flow. Something. Just push it back and get it out of your face and get it out of your, your space. Get it out of your face and out of your space. Yeah. And stay in the power of God. Stay in the presence of God. Move and produce and do. It'll also build your confidence level. You'll feel great because of what you're doing and because you're under the anointing. It's a game changer. It's a life changer. It's all about that. Number one ingredient. Number one essence of experience, of reality. Supernaturally upon a person is the touch of heaven by the Holy Ghost. The touch of his own anointing. And that'll make you invincible. It'll make you his warrior. It'll give you confidence and grace to do and make and produce. I'm telling you. And as you do that, you're going to see the blessings that make rich. So get off the merry-go-round and start running forward. Don't look back. Don't replay the future. I mean, don't replay the past. Pre-play the future. Stop replaying the past. Let the past be behind you. That's why the Lord told the devil, get behind me, Satan. Hit the road, Jack. And pre-play your future with your imagination. Look forward, move forward, take action, do these things, and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for being my partner. You need to go online and do that right now on thomasmanton.com. Someone could type that on the screen. www.thomasmanton.com. In Kenya, the M-Pesa line is 792 Three two zero seven eight zero zero seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero. Cash app is dollar sign D R Thomas Manton, which is short for doctor. Dollar sign D R Thomas Manton altogether. That's the code for me. You'll see me pop up there on Cash App. You can do that. It's a very good way to sew. You put in your details once, and then every time you want to do it recurrently, it just takes a few seconds. And I believe that works worldwide, of course, by the World Wide Web. So, uh, directly on the website, will also get me on the, the, through, through the PayPal. But if you want to go express on PayPal, you can do paypal.me, paypal.me, forward sign Thomas Manton. That's all you need, paypal.me, forward sign Thomas Manton, if that's easier for you. But you can get it all on the website, on www.thomasmanton.com. If you want to talk to me, WhatsApp, WhatsApp me on plus two five four. Someone can put this on the screen for me. Plus two five four seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero. Let me say that a little faster. Plus two five four seven nine two. 320 780 plus 254 
792-320-780. You can get me anywhere on WhatsApp if you'd like to send me a message. If you have something large to do, like the Lord is talking to certain people, you can get in touch with me directly and we'll figure out how. I just got a call from uh, one of my uh, spiritual... Uh, ministers who was touched by the anointing in our meeting so powerful they trace the blessing that they're getting back that's exactly right brother Frank thank you so much my brother dear man thank you yes whatsapp w whatsapp or m peso works on the same but in Kenya of course you don't need the 254 just 792 320 780 and please do do that don't just like look at it and go oh it's action that God sees and I'm gonna be praying for you when I see your name pop up you've done something woo that that's big that that makes me know you're like you want the blessing now I am now I'm praying now I'm diving in for you I'm diving in the water I'm swimming I'm, I'm you know I'm, ba I'm battling for you if I never see you how can I do it you haven't you haven't made a specific request by action so you do that and I'm going to be praying. The Lord's going to bless you. Woo! God, I feel, I feel the grace of heaven. This is powerful. Father, touch my friend right now. Ah, the Lord. Fire upon you right now. And Jesus, there it is. Receive it. Wake up. Rise up. Move up. Move forward. Take action. Get busy. Get off the merry-go-round. And move forward in your life. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you so much, and I'll see you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And those of you in America, do the right thing. Get busy. And make sure our, our nation stays in good shape. It's important, this one. Love you. See you later.